What can we do so far? What have we learned so far? If I give you a single charge and a location, what can we do so far? Drake, what does A want me to find? Electric so electric field, symbol for electric field is capital E with no subscript. I'm looking on my formula sheet. There's two equations that have a capital E in them. The first equation is K Q over R squared. The second equation, actually, I think that's the second equation. I think the first equation is the definition of electric field, F over Q. Which one am I going to use in part A? Well, noticing they gave me a radius, a distance, something with a, me a length measurement. Noticing they didn't give me anything in Newtons. I think I'm going to find the electric field from a point charge by going K Q over R squared. Nine times ten to the ninth. Two micro coulombs. I've had a number of kids in my room. Mr. Duick, what's the mu again? Please notice on your formula sheet, on the back page of the formula sheet, there is a chart that has all the metric prefixes and what powers of ten they are. You can memorize, and I would memorize this one because it's going to show up all the time. But you don't have to. It's on your sheet. Divided by, nice try, 75 centimeters is 0.75 squared. The heck? Okay. Try that again. My calculator went a little weird there all of a sudden. Uh, 9 times 10 to the 9th, 2 times 10 to the negative 6 divided by, wow, let's try that again. 9 times 10 to the 9th, 2 times 10 to the negative 6 divided by 0.75 squared. 32,000, I did say typically electric fields are in the thousands-ish, so I'm okay with this. Is it 32,000? Units, the units come from this equation, no hesitation. What must the units be? Newtons per coulomb. Drake, what did it say in brackets in part A? Direction, again, how do we get the direction? We imagine at the location we're interested in right there, a little tiny positive charge. How tiny positive? Uh, so tiny it doesn't have its own electric field because that would change the question. And we ask, which way would that positive want to move if it could? And we figure that out by using the fact that like charges and unlike charges. You're my, yeah, you're, my, you're the guy I go to on this one, yeah? Yeah, okay. So, Drake, my friend, this charge here, positive or negative? Don't overcomplicate it. Yeah, because there's no minus in front of it, okay? Right, Captain Obvious, okay? This charge here, positive or negative? And the test charge for electric field is defined as positive, so like or unlike? Like or unlike? Both positive, so like charges will? So this thing's going to move to the? Okay, so the electric field is to the right or east or whatever you wanted to call it. Skip B, we're going to do C. Rebecca, what does C want me to find? The force. Okay. Well, the force is going to be K, Q1, Q2 over R squared. The force on a 2 Coulomb, that's a massive charge. Two Coulomb charge placed at that point. Wait, 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 wait. Drake, what did we find in part A? We did. Drake, 
is this another way to calculate electric field? Does this equation also have an F in it? This would totally work, but <coughs> that's doing it the long way. That's like using Newton's law of universal gravity to find mg on the Earth when you could have just gone mg. I can find the force, I'll put an E for electric force, by also going Q times the electric field, where Q is the charge at that location. Rebecca, how big is the charge at that point? Um, yep. And how big was the electric field? Um, we found it in part A. And I'll bet in your head, can you multiply 2 times 32? What'd you get? 64. So 64. Th oh, Mr. Duick, that's what it's like to do math in my head. Yeah, that's what you feel kind of nerdy, kind of good. Uh, force units are going to be? It's a force. Newton. Yeah. Direction. Now I'm going to use not which way would a positive want to move but could. I have to look at my charge. Uh, oh, wait a minute. If the electric field right there is to the right, that means a positive would feel a force to the right, and a negative would feel a force to the left. Uh, this charge here, Rebecca, positive or negative? Oh, it's going to feel a force to the right. Has to. If it was a negative, it would be going to the left. Okay? This idea of you know, if I know the electric field somewhere, I have a nice shortcut for finding the force. We can expand on that because when we're talking about electric potential, energy, and in a bit, voltage, you're going to see those equations contain each other too, kind of like this does. What does the electric field tell us? It tells us the number of newtons of, newtons, newtons of force per coulomb placed at that point. Electric field gives us an indication of how much force a coulomb will experience at that location. There's a similar concept for energy. There's a similar concept for energy. Except instead of telling us how many newtons per coulomb, it tells us how many joules of energy per coulomb placed at that point. That's the definition of voltage. Voltage is defined as the amount of potential energy per charge. It's joules per coulomb. There's a problem here. What letter is voltage? V. v. See it? Capital V or lowercase v? That, it is a capital because of the typewriting, but in handwriting, it's kind of tough to tell sometimes. And in a little bit, we're going to be having questions that have both voltage and speed in them. What letter do we use for speed? There is potential to get your Vs and your Vs mixed up. So what I was taught by my college physics teacher, and it's a habit, whenever I'm doing a capital V, I'm always going to put little wings on it, like a, a typed serif font or whatever. That's V for voltage equals potential energy per charge. And I will be pretty consistent. I'll almost always do that. Anytime I'm thinking voltage, capital V, I'll put the little wings on there because I'm a messy handwriter. Okay, That's problem number one. It's possible to mix up your Vs because they will show up in the same equation. Problem number two, you may have noticed I didn't read the sentence completely in the previous paragraph. Here's what it says. For energy, there's a similar concept that tells us the joules of energy per coulomb at that point, and this quantity is commonly called what? Potential, potential energy. Potential, potential energy. Potential, potential energy. There is potential to mix those up. You might remember at the beginning of this unit, I went on a rant where I said, what happens often on the test is I ask for something and kids give me something totally different. This is what happens. I ask for the potential and they give me the potential energy in joules and I have to give them zero because I wanted voltage. Or I ask for the potential energy in joules and they give me voltage. 
Why is it called potential? There is a good reason that it's called potential, voltage, potential. However, I will almost always refer to it as voltage because of that possibility of getting them mixed up, because of the potential, so to speak. So the units for potential or voltage are joules per kilogram, and that's the definition of a volt. I think, pardon me? Joules per coulomb, that's the definition of a volt. And is that equation, I think, is the second one, second row, first equation on your electrostatics formula sheet? Yes? V equals PE over Q, except instead of PE, they go EP over Q. So again, on, their for on your formula sheet, I think it does this. Is that right? Of course, I'm using letter E for electric field. And they're on the formula sheet using E for electric field and electric potential energy. So don't confuse electric field with electric potential energy with electric potential. There is plenty of possibility to do that. What's the solution? First of all, solution number one would be not to be on your iPad. Solution two would be keep up with the homework. This is one unit. If you try and cram, you're going to get everything mixed up. You will. If you keep up with the homework, stuff will be falling into place after you've already found a spot in your brain for other stuff. We must be careful not to confuse potential with potential energy. That's the definition of voltage. It's energy per coulomb. Example two says, fill in the proof to find the equation to calculate the potential due to a point charge Q. So here's our big planetary charge. It's sending out an electric field in all directions. And because it's sending out an electric field in all directions, the same way as the big mass is sending out a gravitational field in all directions, objects that enter this field will have potential energy. And because they have potential energy, that also means they have potential. Voltage. They have a certain amount of energy per coulomb. We imagine that we move a test charge, little q, from out to infinity to here, and then we find the ratio of potential energy per charge. Say, what? Here was our potential energy equation. K, big Q, little q, over R. That's right from your formula sheet. I think that's third row down, first one. I've defined voltage as potential energy per charge. It's going to be what happens to the little Q's? Yep. Here is how you can calculate voltage at a location if you know what's causing the voltage, what's causing the potential in the first place. It's K big Q over R. And I'm trying to be consistent again, Sarah, using a big Q when I mean the big planetary charge that's causing it. I'll always try and use a little Q if I'm talking about the charge at that location that's experiencing it. Voltage potential. Don't write this down. Electric field. Potential energy. Force. They look a lot alike. And the only way I've learned to help you keep them straight is to say to you, keep up with the homework, please. Please. Because unfortunately, if you find the wrong thing on the test, I'm giving you a zero because I can't even give you the part marks I'd like to give you. It's like saying find acceleration and you give me distance. You may have found the distance correctly. It's not what I asked for. K, still same old, same old, nine times 10 to the ninth. Q, big Q, the charge creating the voltage by sending out the electric field. R, your location from the charge that's creating the voltage, sending out the electric field. Turn the page. 
This is the same diagram we started this lesson out with. Except now, Drake, I'm coming back to you again. What does part A want me to find? Um, Stop. Did they say potential energy? They said potential energy. Did they say, and this is hugely important, did they say potential energy? And say no loud and proud, no. So please do not try going PE equals, do not try doing that. What did they ask me to find? Potential, another word for which is, begins with letter V. Well, I have two ways to find voltage. There's the definition, which is the amount of energy per coulomb. That was the, I think, first equation for voltage. And I think in the third row down, you see voltage is K Q over R. I'm referring to your formula sheet also because I said it was worth having it in front of you so you could train your eyes where to look so you know what you're looking for certain concepts. So if you don't have your formula sheet in front of you, you're foolish. Which one am I going to use here? Here's your hint. Did they give me a distance? Did they give me a radius? I'm using the one that's got the meters in it. I'm using the KQ over R. I'm not using this one. It's going to be 9 times 10 to the 9th. Q, the charge that's causing it, is 2 microcoulombs divided by 0.75. Typically, voltages end up being in the tens or hundreds or thousands, sometimes in the hundreds of thousands, but that's rare. How many volts do we have at that location? How many joules of energy does every Coulomb have at that location? What do you get? Sorry? 24,000. Anybody else? Yeah. Uh, unit voltage is measured in volts, conveniently, and that's a lowercase, I think it's a lowercase v. Yeah, it's a lowercase v. Direction. Ready? Go back to this box here. You can make a little note. Voltage, because it's energy per coulomb and energy is a scalar, voltage is a scalar. Voltage is a scalar. So, direction. Who cares? Is none. Has magnitude only. Okay. Drake, what's the voltage at that location? 24,000 volts. That's how many joules of energy per coulomb. Robbie, what is, uh, oh, cross out B. What does C want me to find? If a two, massive, a two coulomb charge is placed at that point, well, I guess I could go K, Q1, Q2 over R. That's the potential energy equation. And that would work. Q1 would be 2 microcoulombs. Q2 would be 2 coulombs. R, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Drake, what did we find in part A? There isn't by chance an equation that has both voltage and energy in it, is there? Is there? Yeah. You know what? Let's write that down. Let's write down voltage equals joules per coulomb. That's on your sheet. In fact, that's how we define this. Robbie, how would I get the energy by itself? You know what? The amount of potential energy at that location is going to be QV or VQ. I typically put the Q in front because I'm treating the Q kind of like the M from mass, which was almost always in front of our equations for kinematics, right? Oh, I can do this in my head. It's going to be 2, that's Q, times 24,000. Robbie, in your head, how much potential energy does that charge possess at that location? Units? Energy. Joules? Direction? <coughs> Is done. And I'm going to skip D as well in the interest of time. 
Voltage is how much energy per coulomb you have at a location. There's two ways to calculate it. One is if you know what's causing the voltage, KQ over R. One is if you know how much energy you have at that location. So that also means if we know the change in voltage, which is also called potential difference. Why? What's change in anything? Mm -hmm. Did you say minus? What's another math word for minus that begins with the letter D? So if any of you get into electronics, you'll always talk about whether or not there's a potential difference. Because if there's a potential difference and you connect it, current's going to flow and you're going to get a shock if you're touching it. If there's no potential difference, current will not flow. Even if you're at a million volts, if the thing you're touching is at a million volts, you're fine. Okay? So what you're going to see, one of the safety features, one of the workarounds, if you're an electrician, is Either I'm going to totally insulate myself. If I can't, I'll bring myself up to the same voltage as what I'm touching, and then I'm fine. It's the cake. No potential difference. No current will flow. I'll show you a video showing that later. All right. I think I told you the other day that old provincial loved to give these kite pictures because kids got terrified because they were like, oh, surely there's some way I can figure out all the angles. And we're in Scalarville. Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? Did they give me all the distances that I need? That's all I need. All right. Liam, my friend, you ready? What does part A want me to find? Does not want me to find potential energy. Please don't ever make that mistake again. Read very, very carefully. What does it want me to find? Potential. Okay. You see how easy it is to do, by the way. Part of it's my fault because I've drilled you guys so well for the past year and a half, but wakey, wakey. So what do you want me to find? Where? Okay. Um, what I'm going to do, don't write this down, I'm going to find the voltage from this one. I'm going to find the voltage from this one. I'm going to add them up. But wait a minute. Are both charges identical? Are both distances identical? I think I'm going to find the voltage from one and times by two, okay? I'm going to call this one on the left capital A. I'm going to call this one on the right charge capital B. And I'm just going to make a little note to myself. I'm going to find two times the voltage from A at location X. Now, if this wasn't symmetrical, I'd have to find them both separately. It'd be more typing, meh. But we can use that shortcut. Which voltage equation am I going to use? I think charge A and B are what are causing the voltage. They're the planets. I'm going to use K Q A over R A at location X. Oh, but. I'm going to multiply that by 2 since there's two charges and it's symmetrical. You okay with that, Nikki? So that 2 is coming from the fact that two identical charges. Save myself some time. Liam, what's K? Charge A and charge B are both 2.5 microcoulombs. divided by, what's uh, the distance between charge A and X? 0.2. How many volts, how many joules per coulomb is there at location X? That seems big, but it's two big charges, so I'm okay. I got, you get 225,000? Okay. 225,000 volts right there. Okay. That means if you put a one Coulomb charge there, it would have 225,000 joules of energy, a fair bit of energy. Sinead, what's part B want me to find? No idea what you said. Sorry, what was that? Where? Potential or voltage. By the way, it's not potential volt. It's find the potential. Or another word you can put in there is find the voltage. Okay? Where? Uh, you know what? 
I'm going to again do the same argument since it's symmetrical. I'm going to find two times the voltage. Oh, by the way, look up, fo folks. I was sloppy. I should have put wings on that there. I'll put wings there. Uh, from charge A at location Y, which is going to be 2 times K QA over RA at location Y. 2 times 9 times 10 to the 9th, 2.5 times 10 to the negative 6, 0.35, ooh, I don't think this is going to work out evenly. Conveniently, I think I can just backspace Sinead and go like that. All the other numbers stayed the same. Yeah, I didn't think it was going to work out evenly. Uh, I'll go 128, 571, because I'm not done yet. 128, 571 volts. If they wanted this, I would go 1.29 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 volts. Sarah, what C want me to find? Difference. The word difference means which mathematical operation? Subtract. So I'm going to find the potential difference, the change in voltage, and that's going to be Vx minus Vy. Mr. Duick, why didn't you go final minus initial? Why did you go initial minus final? Because the question said to do it that way. Okay. They really haven't told me that x is f initial. I assumed x was initial because it comes first in the alphabet. Doesn't mean it is. Um, it's going to be 225,000 minus that answer. And I get a potential difference, a change in voltage of 96,400. What that means, Robbie, is if you were a charge and you moved from here to here or from here to here, you would travel through 96,400 volts of change. Riley, what do you want me to find? Change in potential plus change in kinetic. Riley, do you see a change in kinetic in this question? Do you see that we're starting at a certain speed or ending at a certain speed anywhere? Then let's assume the change in kinetic is zero. What's change in anything? Oh. And then potential energy final would be K, Q1, Q2 over... Oh. Wait, 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 wait. Riley, doesn't your formula sheet actually say this? Does your formula sheet have deltas in front of it or not? Yeah, Hey. Riley, hey, hey, get the change in potential by itself, please. Oh, are you saying that I can go Q times the change in voltage? What did I find in part C, Riley? Oh, so all I need to do know is how big is the charge that I'm moving through this? So I'm not talking about charge A or charge B. Did they tell me how big a charge we're moving through this system? <coughs> hey, yeah. We're moving a 1.25 millicoulomb charge. So it's going to be 1.25 millicoulombs times, I'll write 96,400. I think I still have this stored on my calculator. This is way nicer than having to break this all up and do it all separately. And this is where voltage is a lovely shortcut. If you know the voltage, if you know the potential somewhere, it's not hard to find the potential energy. 
It's also one of the reasons why voltage is also called potential, because it's related to potential energy. Even though it's not joules, it's joules per coulomb. Uh, this times 1.25 scientific notation, negative 3. You get 120.5, 121? Yeah. So if the charge starts and ends at rest, then the work is just going to be the change in potential energy, which is the cha charge times the change in voltage. It says, prove that if a charge Q begins and ends at rest, then the work done is that. We kind of just did, but let's do it really quickly. Work equals change in potential plus change in kinetic. It wants us to prove that work equals QV. Okay. Um, if you start at end at rest, what's your change in potential energy? Oh, oh, sorry, change in kinetic energy. Nada. Zero, zip. Change in kinetic energy. Um, and I know that voltage is equal to... Yeah, it's the same substitution. There it is. There's the proof. I guess work equals... Q. Now, you may notice I'm kind of sloppy in my notation. You might recall in Physics 11, I told you time is always a change in. It should always have a delta in front of it. And because it should always have a delta in front of it, we kind of get lazy over the years and we stop putting a delta in front of it. We just clue in, you're always starting and stopping a stopwatch. That's just how you measure time. Remember that way back when? Voltage is very similar. You're going to see voltage is always a change in, and you're going to notice often I don't put the delta in front of it. It's a habit because no one does because, oh, for Pete's sakes, we know it is a change in it's voltage. So I'll tuck that in there. But what that also means is if you don't want to change in potential energy, if you just want the potential energy at a specific location, it's the charge at that location times the voltage at that location. That can be a really nice shortcut too, especially when we're looking at circuits where we know the voltage just by looking at the battery. Then we can figure out how much energy there is in a circuit instead of having to go KQ1, Q2 over R. So here's our summary. Potential or voltage, same word, same thing can be found using the definition. Now, the definition of a volt was the amount of potential energy per coulomb. So if you know the test charge at a location, how many coulombs it is, and you know how much energy that charge has, that's how you can calculate the voltage at that location. Really, this equation is more useful when you get the potential energy by itself. In fact, you'll use this equation more as potential energy equals QV because it's such a nice shortcut to finding the potential energy. We can also find it from the point charge equation if we know the big planetary charge that's causing the potential, the voltage. Going back to last day's lesson, potential energy can be found using the potential energy equation if we know both charges and how far apart they are. That's what we did last day. Lots of typing. Ah, but if you happen to know the potential, the voltage at a location, you can also find the potential energy going like that. Oh, and if you want to find the change in potential energy, the work, it's going to be the charge times the change in voltage that it traveled through, the final minus initial. So if you also want to, you can imagine a little delta and a little delta here. I'd much rather type two things than having to go final 
minus initial ditto marks and all that stuff. Note, potential energy potential are not vectors and have no direction. So if we have several charges, we just add them. And because they're scalars, we're going to include plus or minus signs from the charges in the equation. You can have negative voltage. All that means is at that point, an average charge, a positive charge, will have negative potential energy, and you would have to do work to move it out to infinity. You would have to add energy to move it out to infinity. If that positive charge was in a positive voltage, what that's telling you is it wants to move on its own, probably wants to fall up. What's your homework? Number one. Two, three. Mm -hmm. Let me just kind of look at this here. Okay. I'm okay with four. Five is good. Six is good. Seven we'll get to later. Eight we'll get to later. Nah. By the way, number nine looks scary. It's a scalar. You would just add the two voltages together, no tip to tail. Yeah, gigavolts. It's big. Um, you know what? I'm going to be bad, and I'm actually going to assign 9, and I'm not going to assign the other ones. So 9 is good after all. Sorry, folks. I don't think I'm going to do 10. It's cool, but eh. Uh, 11, I'm not wild. The diagram kind of worked out yucky. 12, between points. Uh, sure, 12. 12 actually is only a couple lines. Okay. Threw a lot at you. Holy smokes, you even have 10 minutes to work on this. <laughs>